Hi, I'm Tony. This is Slack. Welcome to Smog Vlog. Today, we're going to be chatting some crap about the vaping news. Right, first up on the news hit list. The BBC Today released an article saying, Do e cigarettes make it more difficult to give up smoking? So, the story here, which sadly comes from the Daily Mail. Um, it, it claims that people who use e-cigarettes to give up smoking are 28% less likely to give up than people who don't. Now, I mean, it's, it's just a crap nonsense story, really, because, you know, how many percentage... How, how can you study that? Um, I know loads of people who've completely stopped smoking and they just vape now. Are they including people who still vape as not giving up? Is it is just crap. Uh, it's been picked apart, and and people that have done the original report, which the Daily Mail mentioned, said, "Yeah, there's maybe some, you know, leeway in the truth of all this." <laughs> you know, you can just tell it. It's just a a nonsense story. You know, another scaremongering from the Daily Mail that's sadly been picked up by the BBC, who's supposed to be a fairly reputable non sort of tabloidy that uh, is the worst part yeah. whereas the the daily fight file <clears throat> um have a uh no no are notorious for you know leading with these these pieces that are complete and utter we bullshit. hold the bbc to a higher standard than this than quoting you know the daily mail and they should be fucking impartial and not be leading with these fluff pieces that don't lead anywhere yeah so i mean if you're trying to give up smoking and you don't really want to give up smoking, it's difficult. Uh, if you're trying to get off smoking, uh, e-cigarettes is a really good avenue to go because you do the process. You can go out for a cigarette, you go out for a vape, you know. Um, it's very similar. Now, you, you're comparing someone who doesn't want to give up smoking. You know, as when people want to stop and like, you know, you have a health scare or something like that, people just stop dead. My nan, she smoked for like eighty years or something, and she just stopped one day. Just went some seventy odd years. Just said, "Yeah, I'm stopping smoking," and that was that. You know, so you're comparing those people with people who re don't really want to give up smoking but feel they probably should, or maybe even just trying e-cigarettes because it is, you know reportedly better for you 95 percent better thank you uh national health england public uh, health england thank you public health england but um yeah it, it's it even says it on this bbc thing where they references someone else it's you're comparing apples to oranges it's just a nonsense article i mean it's kind of good that the bbc have sort of brought some sort of sense to it but it still comes across as a little bit sensationalist you know a little bit just sort of like pitchforks at dawn mm. standard media response for vaping but i think that's enough of that you can check out the article in the links below uh on to the next, next one next up italian company goes legit now the headline for this one is an italian company launches scientifically approved e-liquid uh they're going to be coming in line with the tpd you did it right i did it right yeah, so uh, Flavor Art, who you might have heard of, certainly if you're in the mixing your own e juice world, you'd have heard of them. They're, they're quite big there. They're, they're the largest in Italy for e juice and flavorings, and they're one of the largest in the world, according to the uh, yeah, marketing people for their company, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, what, what they've done is they started this Clearstream uh, onward project, uh, which is basically looking at making sure the e juice is all good. Uh, I quite like this as an idea, but. What it is, is they're getting ahead of the game for the TPD. So I think it's good. Well, I don't want to be vaping, you know, bat droppings and, and petrol. Um, you hope not, not bat droppings and petrol. Yeah. yeah, not tried it yet. Might be all right. But, um, yeah, it's good. It's good for us, the consumer. But it is a shade of things to come, you know, mm. with the TPD. Everyone's going to have to be doing this. They're starting it early. So when that TPD hammer drops, they're still able to keep going. And they're not going to be fighting about i think we're going to see more companies doing this sort of thing uh in europe uh in in the run-up to the tpd hitting um but there you go flavor art are on the ball next up on the hit list diacetyl version two 
Yeah, complete bullshit story. Same as diacetol, you know, there, there was like a couple of months ago that hit. Everyone's like, oh my God, it's got diacetol in it. Yeah, we don't like that in Aeris Vapors, but there's such a small amount and there's actually more in cigarette flavorings than, than there are in e-cig flavorings. So again, that was blown massively out of portion. So now we have benzaldehyde, which is going through exactly the same thing. I, I can guarantee that shit is in tiny quantities in e-juice. I mean, we don't want it there. So it's good that, you know, People like Flavor Art are getting this shit tested in their e-juice and getting it removed, so that's really cool. But at the same time, there's sort of sensationalist horror stories where I bet you £10, 10 English, English pounds, pounds, that that shit is in cigarettes in greater quantities, you know, and it's, it's just nonsense. But yeah, again, the media need their pitchforks, they're, they're just so anti-vaping. Um, Weird vapors don't want that in there, so it's kind of something I'm interested in to see that you know it's in there. But at the same time, there's that pinch of salt that I take it with, you know. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, these articles are always the same. They they've just sort of like come at you with the big sensationalist headline. Uh, but us as vapors, we we don't actually give a shit about that. We we give a shit about the the crux of the information, how it affects us, not vaping. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, there was the same thing uh, going back about a year ago, something like that, almost six months ago. Uh, formaldehyde, that was the thing at the time. You know, for, oh, there's formaldehyde in these things. Yeah, okay, but what type of formaldehyde? There are multiple types, and it's found naturally in your bloodstream. So how, oh, you know, oh my God, blood, quick, we've got formaldehyde in our blood, let's bleed ourselves dry because fucking Daily Mail said so. It's, <laughs> oh. Anyway, on to the next article. Fox News have done an uh, interesting little piece, you know, a whole page on a man from Splendora, which is a fucking amazing name for a place. Like, it sounds like a different planet, you know? If, if you're watching a sci-fi film and you saw Planet Splendora, that, I mean, it just fit right in. But it's not. It's somewhere in America, over, over the pond, you know, I have no concept of where it is. Anyway, it's not about that. It's about this 22-year-old guy driving along and his e-cig explodes in his pants. That, that, that means trousers, you know, if you're in England. Uh, pants mean something different in England and uh, you don't keep your e-cig in that. Maybe at the weekends. But anyway, it's exploded and done his leg in and he, say, uh, he was asked, do you think this was a defective device? Oh, yes, definitely. It's definitely not that he left it unlocked. Uh, and just overheated and vented the battery. Definitely not that. He just seems a bit suspicious that it would just explode when not being used and not be any fault of the person. You know, dodgy connection, something's been broken. It could have been a faulty device. There is that chance, you know, it could have shorted itself. But if it was a faulty device, wouldn't it have just done it when the battery was first put in? You know, what would have changed unless he's knocked it or something? The story, I mean, it's, it's shit, because I'm so split here, because on the one hand, I don't like seeing people hurt, yeah, and I don't like vaping being the bad guy in the stories as well, but at the same time, it's kind of funny the way the media run the story, it's Fox, so of course, you know, it's going to be funny. Um, there's a, yeah, not only did his legs set on fire, but so did part of the vehicle he was travelling in. Yeah, <laughs> it's like... <laughs> Okay, I mean, yeah, it is what it is. His device exploded. He's deciding whether or not he's going to sue, you know, or pursue suing. Now, given that you live in America where you sue for, I'm going to sue you because you're called Tony, you know, it's, you can kind of sue for anything over there. And uh, I'm wondering if he's not suing because he knows he was at fault. Because how often do we do it? We just pick up our outie, chuck it in our pocket. Oh, I've done it, I've nearly vented something. And that is entirely my fault, you know. And so I, I just make sure I'm more careful next time. I don't know, what are your thoughts on this one, Tony? Well, putting on my conspiracy hat, let's take the facts into account. He's American, he's been hurt. He read last year that some woman got $5 million payout from having a similar burn on her leg. Let's do the maths. Yeah, I mean, he is, has been badly burnt, but it's the, the question is, do we believe that the device just randomly exploded in his pocket 
or do we believe that he, he'd either done something wrong, he'd either damaged the device, or more, I reckon, he just left it on and that button has been pressed and it's overheated. Well, I believe currently he's probably talking to his lawyers and finding out how the companies are at fault and how much they will take from them. Yeah, so, I mean, it is a shame. I feel sorry for the guy. I always feel sorry for people when they're hurt. Yeah. But it's kind of hard to be sorry when you see it portrayed through Fox Media's eyes, you know? It really is. Anyway, next on the news hit list is Leo No-Go Vape Show. So, yeah, Leonardo DiCaprio is a guy that we all know, or should know at least, um, he's been very public in his vaping. I mean, he was pictured last year, early last year, with an MVP2, I believe, in a kin on the beach. He's not shy about using it, which is awesome, because it's good publicity for, you know, getting people off the stinks. Yeah, definitely. So, re more recently, he was seen uh, vaping inside the room at the Screen Actors Guild, the SAG uh, Awards, and, yeah... That was awesome. That's really good publicity for vaping and vapors. Um, some of the comments, you know, you see people like someone actually said, you know, I used to take the piss out of vapors. Then I've seen Leo vaping, and I'm like, I kind of can't take the piss anymore. That's kind of what we need. We need a sort of, you know, a public face of vaping, and you know, someone who people see. You know, you don't want like critters like us just sat on a sofa talking, yeah, vaping's great, guys. But having someone like Leonardo DiCaprio uh, is awesome. So, yeah, there was a lot of backlash from that. The media, oh, massively irresponsible vaping pitchforks, you know. Um, and the Academy, uh, after a telling off as well from the American Lung Association, the Academy have actually just sort of come out and said, you, you're not going to be vaping here. The Daily Mail ran the Oscar. I mean, all, all sorts of places. We checked The Guardian. But also the Daily Mail ran the same article. But it's funny how they've run the article but because they've said that uh, the Academy Awards have banned all types of smoking. This is not smoke. I keep accidentally calling it smoking, but it's not smoke. You know, so if you also ban nicotine gum as a type of smoking, it, it, I mean... I get their point. That's fine. If they want to ban vaping indoors at their event, I support that. You can do whatever you want with your event, and that's fine. But it's just, again, been turned into this massive sensationalist backlash where it could have been handled a bit with a bit more dignity, I think. But, yeah. With the Daily Mail involved? Oh, of no course chance. not. Of course not. Next up on the vaping news for you, General Idea endorses vaping as a fashion trend for fall 2016, something Slack found on the interwebs. Yeah, I don't look at fashion stuff, but I do look at vaping stuff, just to clarify. Um, they don't do my sort of t-shirts, you know. But yeah, General Idea uh, just paraded all of their models, male models, it's a men's uh, New York Fashion Week bit, um, with uh, e-cigarettes down. Which is pretty cool. I mean, I think that's got to be on the back of uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. I'm pretty sure this has happened this week. Um, but, yeah, it's, vaping's getting really popular, and it's also a bit controversial. So it was only a matter of time till something like this happened. Um, yeah, I mean, it's interesting. That, and again, there's a massive media backlash about this, you know. And it's this is coming from the modelling industry, you know, which is, so, you yeah, know, Drugs and diet and, you know, bulimia and fucking anorexia and all sorts of other things they throw. Uh, and now they're sort of coming up again. Oh, you can't promote vaping. Oh, pitchforks. <laughs> and it's crazy. But, yeah, the, the models are there just wearing their rather weird-looking clothes, strutting up and down, holding them on. And I think that's pretty cool. And lastly, for the vaping news this week, month, year, don't know how long it's going to be, Bi-weekly, hopefully. We, we hope. I mean, plan. That's what we aim for. But... Mm. Anyway, up now is a new vaping shop opening, opening up in Chesham by the people that opened up What for the Vape. Yeah, so Get Bucks run the story, and it's good to see that vaping is still growing. So yeah, if you've seen our One Hit Wonder, EG Review, New World Vaping, they've just sort of gone to an online presence. You know, people are still expanding. People are still, you know, there's new startups. We have seen some closures, and I imagine that's people getting cold feet about the TPD. 
but for closures, we're also still seeing expansion, new shops, new, and that is really good. That mm. that gives me a bit of a warm feeling about it. Yeah, it's not all doom and gloom. If we're seeing all of our vape shops just shut down, shut down, shut down, then you know you would stop getting the cold sweats and and feeling bad. But we're not. We're we're seeing expansion. We're seeing progression. That's good. So yeah, shout out to everyone who's sort of in that industry and sort of making it happen. That's good. Right, that about brings us to the end of the news. So now we go on to talk about the sort of product updates on, on what we've been using. Um, though it's been a while since our last vlog, I think it's going to be fairly quick. I don't think we've got too much to add. So going back in the backs of time, uh, we had uh, the Cooper review, Cooper 200 Watt, the Cooper Plus. Uh, Tony killed it. I did it. It suffered a watery death. You clumsy fuck. That's I mean, it. That's I was usually on the clumsy fuck. So. Actually, more pissed off about the two fairly new batteries that I got with it. But you know, hey, this shit happens. Well, to you, to me. Um, yeah, what we did miss with the Coupon Plus is apparently as the three-click, the standard smoke menu. Now I don't know if that was a, a filming error or whether Oz wasn't doing. It. I don't remember I now. Don't remember. Um, but yeah, if you've got a Coupon Plus, the three-click standard job works apparently so yeah it should, it should be handy a direct menu uh next up after that we had the below nano v2 uh as an rta it's a complete fucker to get wicked um and as a result oh, i haven't really used it since i sort of ran the juice out and ran that build out it's good when you get it working don't get me wrong but i just can't be faffed with it when there's other devices like the obs cryos uh even the Griffin to some extent, you know, mm. there's other stuff there. And plus, doing reviews, we, we just get through stuff. And it, it's rare that we get to use stuff continually. It has to be really good for us to sort of like keep on at it when we've got just new stuff coming through all the time. When we get so much shit that we don't even get time to review it all, which is awesome. I love vaping stuff. Like, there's a running joke at work about me getting stuff sent there, you know. And uh, next up was the Smoke Tree Box. Now, this is so lightweight and it is really nice, but I haven't really been using it because um, a single 18650 goes, I don't tend to like them until this one came along. And I have just been proper addicted to this. The flavour from the Target 75 watt. It's just great. I don't really think I've got any updates since the last review because it was only quite recently. Uh, I'm still loving the vapor for the flavor. Uh, the air is still a little bit tight for me, but I'm getting used to it to the point where I went on to the Aspire Cleto. I, I found it too open when I used to love a really open drawer. So I've sort of changed a little bit. But yeah, still, this is I'm using all the time now, like every day. Uh, even when I'm reviewing stuff, I still feel like back to this. <laughs> To this. <laughs> um, we've got the Relu video, which is probably going to be up to about the same sort of time this video is going to be. Yeah, uh, so up. it could be in a different order. So maybe we'll sort of review that next time. Uh, similarly, the Aspire Clitoris, Cletus, Cleto um, is going to be going up as well. Uh, we've got some other stuff which I think we're going to review, but enough about that so while well, we're done talking about stuff that we've already done let's talk about stuff that we're looking forward to and what's coming up uh for me it's probably the 100 watt e-leaf ice stick tc meh i'm i'm not meh i'm looking forward to that yeah i mean there's certainly some interesting stuff to talk about that i uh some of uh mark thorley hey mark um he was giving me a shout saying what's what's this it's got parallel circuitry so it's going to give it better battery life i don't get how that works i also don't get how that works now i understand that from a um a charging point of view you need parallel charging to get better battery sort of conditioning uh however if you're delivering to the same ohm coil and your batteries are running at the same voltage on the same you know different systems surely the there's not going to be much in it magic and elves but wait for the review it will exactly. be coming up we'll see what's happening uh for me uh i'm uh quite enjoying and looking forward to reviewing the tesla nano uh steampunk to the max loving it um that's pretty cool in terms of what news coming out i mean until snow wolf 2 comes out I, i'm not really fussed about anything got a cuboid in the post but it's chinese new year and so it's probably going to take forever to get here um yeah it's just not anything that i'm like champ champing at the bit for really it's really dipped off 
Yeah, as you know, there's been this, like, a big fun window, and now it's just mm, yeah. yeah. So yeah, what are you guys looking forward to? Yeah. Tell us what what's coming up or what has just come out that you're looking forward to, or that you've just started using. So let us know what you're rocking. Now we'd usually talk about funny stories, but you know I'm a miserable git and uh, it's like. Yeah, I haven't got any funny stories. I've been uh, so small. Dog's been really bad. She's got epilepsy and been having a lot of seizures lately, which makes life very difficult. Um, you know, when she's good, she's really good. Um, but sadly, there's a lot of time looking after her, so it's really been eating into my time, uh, which is part of the reason, a big part of the reason why we haven't been getting the vlog out as often as we want. You know, we we sort of do all the work in the background, but being able to have time here filming it's hard to get so you know we are trying for you um but yeah life is sadly you know trying to get in the way it's doing its best <laughs> it is doing its best also we've been suffering with um vast technical difficulties recently um we're trying to get that sorted out yeah so hopefully the two videos we've shot tonight don't fuck up really um, hope so otherwise editing tony's gonna have a fucking hernia seizure something aneurysm something bad yeah something bad will happen shit yourself <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah it's part of the course <laughs> yeah so we haven't got any fun stories but as always if you guys have got any fun stories do hit us up in the comment section we'd like to hear from you talking of which some of our sort of more chatty friends so, we, so we've got mark thorley who's always uh, either asking me questions or giving me advice on products and stuff like that he's a really good guy Don Nicola, I hope I'm Nicola, saying yeah. Nicola. I'm I'm sorry I, if I'm ballsing up your name. I do apologise. Just remember, you're always welcome for a tea on the sofa with us. Yeah, Sean Stockdale as well. Always nice and chatty. Next up, Stan Sam Connor. Yeah, I'm going to try and say this. Incutatus. Um, don't know if I'm saying that right because I suck at pronouncing anything that is uh, a bit different. So yeah, hey. Anyway, all, always positive comments on the reviews. Next up, our mate from Down Under, Bricko. What up, Bricko? <laughs> yeah, shout out to Steve Milner as well for the uh, shaved bear comment, even though it wasn't direct. See, apparently Tony looks like a shaved bear, which, uh, <laughs> yeah. James Bushell, who due to general fuck-ups is now getting three comments, in, or three, three shout-outs in the outtake section at the end. Yeah, so Devilish Mode as well, one of our earliest subscribers who, who still checks us out. And lastly, for the shout-outs, Brian M. And apologies if we forgot anyone. It's been a really long day. Uh, like I said, we've had loads of shit going on. Uh, it's always great to hear from you, be it on the comments below or on the social medias. So, yeah, thanks, guys. We're approaching 40,000 views now, which is pretty cool. We haven't even been going six months, so yeah, that's really good. And the subscriber count keeps growing, which is nice. All due to you guys. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So, guys, that about draws us to the conclusion of this week's months years vlog thank you for watching if there's anything you'd like us to include drop us a comment down below also don't forget to like and subscribe if you like the shit that we're doing because we like doing this shit yeah and if you haven't seen us before follow us on facebook twitter and instagram and hook us up below if you've got any questions or comments you can reach out but for now thanks for watching smog vlog Wait long enough and eventually I will get an itch. <laughs> <laughs> Don't fuck it. Oh man, you <laughs> bastard. I can't be itching all over now. <clears throat> ah, lower. Lower. <laughs> <laughs> right, that about... Oh, you got to do it. No? Okay. <laughs> cool, I just thought you went to speak. I was going to ask you who's going to start. So, while we're talking about this sort of stuff, I mean, we'll, we'll say about words and shit ready <laughs> come on dragon <laughs> um reviews Oh yeah. James Bushell. Oh, I was looking at the thing, can you do it again? Sorry. 
James Bushell. I'll thank you. Again. Oh, for fuck's sake. Ready? Yeah. James Bushell, who, due to general fuck ups, is now getting three comments in, or three three shout outs in the outtake section at the end. You sign out because I did it last time. You did. Yeah. Did it last time. Yeah. You pre What timing? Damn! Just arrived. Knuckles is here, everyone. Knuckles! Knuckles!